Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. The Master's Voice is available on audio and video platforms and I will leave all that information in the description box. Please always check the description box to get a short blurb about what each prophecy is about. You can also find out where to follow the channel. There are some types of videos such as the recent ones that I have been doing across the last week or so relating to what we will just call the medical emergency of 2020. Everybody knows what happened in 2020, but does everybody really know what happened in 2020? Those types of videos can no longer be hosted here. So please listen carefully. You can find them on different video platforms that are named rumble.com, bitshoot.com and brighteon.com. Those are the only places where you can find videos related to the medical emergency, the CV-19 emergency of 2020. Those videos can no longer be hosted here. And when you go to BitChute in particular and Brighteon, there it's been put handily into a playlist for you dating from the oldest to the latest one. And that playlist is called the medical playlist. So please, if you are interested in knowing things that God was saying all the way back then in 2020 until now, the Lord has again picked up suddenly and started bringing new prophetic words concerning that. And that is because it is a concerning aspect of our current history and it will play a role in the things that are to come. So please visit the alternate platforms in terms of audio. Look below. You'll see the link to SoundCloud. You'll see the link to um, Spotify to Apple podcasts and Google podcasts. And if you listen in podcast form, it's actually very easy to make up the gap and it's easy to catch up on these prophecies because it's a hands-free option. All you have to do is listen as you're driving, listen as you're working, listen as you're babysitting with your headphones and you can cover a lot of ground. There are a lot of people who missed out on the medical information because they were not listening in 2020. They were not listening in 2021. They were not listening in 2022 and they have already done things that will cause gross and in most cases irreparable harm to their human vessels. So it is necessary for you to know what is the mind of God concerning what it, whatever it is that you have done. If you have not seen the last two videos, I will leave the links below this one, even though it's, it doesn't reference what I'm going to speak about in this video, but I will leave the links to the last two videos and you simply follow them off platform and listen, share this information with your families. It is urgent, but I will say that the Master's Voice Prophecy blog is never a place where you're going to see titles like, God told me this, watch this video before it gets taken down, 10 exclamation marks. I've always said, that the work that God has me to do is a very grave work. It goes to the heart of humanity. It is not only an American work. It goes to the heart of humanity because the Lord is speaking here things that you only find in the book of Revelation, things that you only find in the sealed up portion of what Daniel was talking about, things that you find in Luke 21, Mark 13, and Matthew 24. In other words, end times prophecy final things, final, final things, after which there shall be no more things. There shall be the glorious coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and us entering into a time period that is only briefly and succinctly referred to in the Bible. So there's no need for alarmist headlines and 12 exclamation marks because I'm handling things that go to people's heart. Here you will always find the truth of what God said, and I will stand firm on what he said, regardless of who believes it, who is not in agreement with it, who keeps asking facetious questions to cover the fact that they do not have discernment to know what is going on here, who is offended by the word, that is not my portion, it does not move me in any way. And today's video is going to discuss some things that the Lord says that I should make public. These things concern the importance of God's prophetic word, the importance of how he has sown it with me. I will be referring to dreams that up until this moment have just been for my information, FYI, celestial things that God wanted me to know and understand concerning these prophecies and how they are to be administered. And so I will be combining some dreams that are just mine. And I will also be 
combining two prophecies in this dream. The first one is going to be called Release the Scrolls. This dream is from October the 4th, 2018. And the other one is a published prophecy, I think, from 2019 or 2020. Just a moment. The second dream is called The Iron Decree, and the date on that is May 24th, 2020. So I will be combining those two prophecies in this one video, along with one or two remarks from other dreams that I have had. And I pray that the wealth of that information will suffice for those who have questions. Simply understand that it is only at the Lord's request that I'm going to be speaking about these things. This dream about scrolls was just for me to understand how the process of these prophecies go. So what can we expect to see? We hear the prophetic word, those who have been here from the beginning, you have heard the prophetic word at a time when for most of you, it was very difficult, excuse me, please. It was very difficult for you to accept the things that you were hearing, very difficult for you to hear that an outwardly powerful nation, a nation that is a core influencer in the earth today, a nation who speaks and others listen, it was very powerful. It was very powerfully hard for many people who found the Master's Voice blog in 2019, especially right when I started. It's very hard to hear that a world leader, a nation that is militarily overpowering, to hear that that nation would come down to its knees, to hear that that nation would be humbled, to hear that that nation would be hated. But now four years have gone by and the things I was speaking of back then don't seem so far-fetched. When I was speaking about Russia and linking the nation of Russia with Ukraine, this was not on people's radar. They were saying, how can Russia ever come here? Russia is not militarily strong. Yes, Russia has risen a little bit and Russia has empowered itself a little bit, but Russia can never beat America. And besides, everybody loves America and America has everyone's ear. And when I was saying that the nations of the world would pivot to Russia, when I was printing out these prophecies in 2019 and 2020 and saying that you will hear the voices of countries rising up to condemn America, that they would begin to do what God called barking, which is, I basically saw microphones across the world map, and these microphones were emitting little lightning waves that I take and explained to be sound. So the microphones were on and they were emitting little lightning bolt sounds to show that there was strong information coming out of the microphones. And the Lord said, yes, my daughter, tell them that there will be very strong anti-American rhetoric, that people will get not on small blogs, they will not get on social media. God said, no, world leaders, we're going to get on international TV, their national broadcasts, and they were going to strongly condemn America. They were going to strongly speak harsh words against America. And now we see that happening in the continent of Africa. We see that happening in Latin America. We see even America's usual allies like Germany, but especially France beginning to tell America that we're not your vassal. And so things that seemed far-fetched are now fetched. And the Lord was telling me all the way back in October of 2018, how the prophetic word goes. And how you treat the prophetic word is literally how God is going to treat you. So this generation is very much now sold to a particular form of ignorance where people decline to educate themselves. People want to educate themselves off of TikTok videos. They want to educate themselves off handy little five to three, three to five minute snippets from social media. They want, this is why YouTube doesn't even have full news clips anymore. YouTube has found that the most, pos the most popular way to rack up two to four million views in only a few weeks is to make one minute, 30 second clips or two minute, 47 second clips and throw that into the algorithm because people's attention span is very short now. They want you to get to the point quickly and they're not afraid to advertise their impatience. People no longer have a learning mindset. They're no longer in a listening mode. Most people are in speaking mode. And that's why there is so much speech, but not much wisdom in our times. And I have to tell you, that is a very dangerous situation where a lot of mouths are talking, but nothing of use, sense, and wisdom is coming out. A lot of sound 
will be made across the earth in the end days, but all of it is obfuscation. It is thick, choking black smoke. It is opinion that is not backed by truth. And if you do not have the truth, if you do not have a mindset in these days to buy the truth and sell it not, Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth and sell it not, also wisdom with understanding, which means even if the truth was something you could purchase with money, spend all you have on getting truth and put away anything else. If you are not in the posture where you desire truth at all costs, you desire truth, whether it offends you or not, you desire truth, whether it causes you pain or not. If you are not in the posture where your heart is able and willing to listen to the things that God is saying will come upon the earth, then you will cast off the prophetic word and say things like there are no prophets today. And God has told us everything in the Bible already. Where in the Bible did God speak to you about COVID mandates, losing your rights and the Excelsior pass? Find the scripture. Where did he say it? Oh, that's right. He didn't say it that way. The Bible has encoded much of what God is saying, and he is now opening up sealed books, sealed secrets. America isn't written in the Bible, and yet her name there is Mystery Babylon. But if God does not give it to a person to proclaim in the earth that the mystery is a mystery no more, it is now open, and God has said that the nation who will be punished according to all that is in Revelation 17 and 18 is America. It's not the Vatican. It's not anywhere else. It's not the Middle East. It's not ancient Babylon site, which is Iraq and Iran. It's none of them. It is America, but you don't see that word in the Bible to those who say that God has made all things known, and yet they are in the dark concerning the final things. I am sent of the Lord to tell you that the way you receive his word the way you handle the prophetic word of God is literally the way that God is going to handle you. And so the first dream, October the 4th, 2018 is called release the scrolls. And this is talking about how these prophecies that God has given me are scrolls. And this is what it was. I had a dream that morning about the word of God. I saw how important God words, God's word is, how prophetic it is and how devastating it can be when someone is ignoring the application and the usefulness of the Bible and also marrying the usefulness of God's written word, the logos, with the prophetic word and twining those two into a single braid in their life. I also saw in this dream, God was making it known to me for he was training me and is still training me. I saw how bad it is to hold back God's word for any reason. And the Lord has made this very strong to me. The first chapter of Jeremiah is something that God made me read and study, understand and absorb into my psyche before he ever gave me leave to start publicly talking about the things he shows me, which is that no one who is given God's prophetic word is supposed to speak it before it's time or is supposed to sit on it when the Lord has said that it must be released. You have to speak the word as you receive it. You have to tell the people what God said because the prophetic word is a word or a path. It is a way out that God makes for people to escape the attacks of the enemy and many other problems that come to them. So in this dream, I dreamt that the word of the Lord was coming to me a lot. It was coming to me copiously. It was coming to me powerfully. It was coming to me constantly. And it looked like three different things. It looked like oil flowing that is one way it appeared. It also looked like a raging river running. So a river that was running very powerfully across the earth. And it also looked like a rough avalanche of water that was going over a very steep cliff into an endless ravine. So if you can just imagine, this is oil flowing. The oil was coming out and I will share a little bit about that. It also looked like a very large river running and it appeared like a rough avalanche of water that was shooting over the edge of a very steep drop 
And this drop went into a ravine that was bottomless, meaning that it was endless. The water would never be able to fill up that hole. And this was the way that the Lord was demonstrating what the prophetic ministry in my life would be like. It would be extremely effusive. It would be filled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It would be extremely powerful, which is why some people feel that they're very confronted with the words that God has given me. But then the Lord did not give me a gently flowing stream for the last days. The last days is when God is going to punish all evil that has ever been taking place on this planet, especially now in our modern times. And God is also going to single out and reward his righteous people. And so there can be no gray when it comes to that kind of matter. God knew exactly who he wanted to choose for this work. He knew exactly the tone. He knew exactly the temperature that he would bring to the work. It is his spirit that speaks here. And back in that time, the Lord was revealing to me how it would go. And so I will share a little bit more about that. Like I said, these things are personal things and these things were for my knowledge to understand. But this representation here of oil flowing, I did say I would share dreams. I once had a dream in which I dreamt that I was inside some kind of large building and in the heart of that building, in the very center of the building, there was a fount. So there was something that came up out of the ground and what poured out of it was oil, but it was not the oil that we know. It was not a, you know, refined oil that just flows in a liquid state. It was something I had never seen before. It was oil that was so thick and it was so pure that it came out almost like candle wax. So it was still able to flow and it flowed up out of this fountain. And my job was to stand by that fountain and collect this oil and put it into small jars and hand it to people. So that's what I was doing. I would scoop up this oil because the process had to be kept pure. The process had to be kept very clean. All I saw myself doing in that dream repeatedly was scooping out oil as it came from that fountain and I would put it into small jars and I would seal just a small little vial, a tube basically, and I would seal it and I would give it to people and people would go away taking that oil with them. And that was my job. And I saw that I did that job and did that job and did that job. And even when I became weary, I could not leave that fountain of oil. I could not leave the word coming to my spirit now is just spigot. A spigot is almost like a, a faucet, a fountain, a tap. It is a place where a substance gushes forth. And I could not leave that place. I knew that if I decided to leave the place, to leave it unattended, to, God forbid, try to delegate the putting of that oil into the vials, the process would become corrupted. And so to those of you who have said, oh, Celestial, the burden looks a lot for you. And do you want us to type up some of the stuff for you? And I have typing experience and maybe I could do this for you. And I've always replied, no, because I had the understanding from long ago, God was showing me how the assignment would be. And it would be that it has to pass through my hands I cannot write down these dreams and then say, can you type it up for me on the blog? The blog is sacred. It is not just a website. It is a sacred space where God's information that has come up through the fountain is being put into individual spigots. That's why each prophecy has a title. Each prophecy has a date. The date that matters on the prophecy is not the, the smaller date that you will see. Oh, published June 19, 2020, published April 22, 2022. That's not the date that matters. The date that matters is the large one next to the prophecy's name. That is the day the prophecy came. So even if you see a prophecy on the blog, published 2022, if the date on it says 2015, that is the date it went into my notebook. And as I'm working through the prophecies, the Lord tells me, publish this one, publish this one in order. So even if that prophecy came from 2015, such as a lot of the Russian prophecies do, and they only come up in 2019, that is the time they were received. And so God was showing me that this precious fountain of oil is not to be corrupted, is not to be mixed with conspiracy theories, is not to be mixed with, oh, I thought this, is not to be mixed with my own thoughts. 
And that's why I clarified at the beginning of this work, stop asking me what I think. Celestial, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on this aspect? What are your thoughts on dispensationalism? This is not a place where you can do that. Nothing goes into this oil unless it will become a corrupted thing. And the next thing that it will do is corrupt you and destroy your faith. And that is why false prophets, that is why false prophets are so dangerous. And I have constantly said this, go and read two Peter chapter two and see what wolves among the sheep do. See what they do to the faith of the believer. See what they do in the heart of even those who do not know God. They cause them to hate the God of our faith. False prophets with their false rapture dates and their false teaching and their false, this is not true and that is not real. They cause outsiders to mock the faith. They cause them to mock the church. They cause them to mock the entire procedure of faith, which would have saved them. They stay away because of the lies and corruption in the church. So this bottling of this oil, I saw for as long as that oil was flowing, I was not going to be able to leave this work. So you're asking, well, how long? As long as the oil of the Lord is flowing, as long as the Lord has a single word to say, I will be bottling it up. I will be putting a title on it. I will be putting the date on it and it will be published as long as there is time and ability and grace to do so. And that is why it cannot be outsourced. It is, this is not something that can be outsourced to anyone else because the spigot called me and the spigot is depending on me to carry on this bottling process and to keep it as sterile as possible so that it will not corrupt the end user when it comes. And so I said that it appeared as oil. I also said that it appeared as a running river and it appeared as a rough avalanche of water that went over a steep cliff into a ravine below. And a dream that goes with this is a dream I had long ago where I saw that the Lord had placed me on a very high cliff. It was a very, very high cliff. It was a very rocky place. It was a place of very high winds. And I was standing there with no shelter from the wind. I was standing there with no protection. I was standing there in a white robe and the only thing I had around my waist was a very rough piece of rope. These things are not easy to share. They're not anyone's business. I'm saying that so that it can be understood for the record. All I had around was not these majestic sashes that everybody else will dream and say, oh, I had a gold sash and I had a, a red sash and it means this. I had a ragged and rough, thick type of rope, very, very big, big rope wrapped around my waist and the end of the rope went up into nothingness. So there was no hand. The rope didn't drag against the ground and it wasn't against a tree. The rope went up into the air and then disappeared. Whoever was holding the rope was out of sight in the higher realms. And I was placed, if this is the cliff and this is its edge, I was placed right at the tip of that edge, leaning forward precariously over this ravine that just a drop. And the rope was holding me and I began to open my mouth and a huge gushing came out of my mouth. A massive, massive flood of water came out of my mouth and began to go into this ravine. Just gush out a flood of flood of flood began to gush out into this cliff. And it seemed as if it was just water going into the cliff and water going into the cliff. And then I looked again and I saw I saw people coming out from what looked like hell. I saw mothers, fathers, children, single people, just people, masses and masses and masses of people coming out from a place that was hot and blazing far, far in the distance down there in that hole. And I saw that as they came out, all their clothes, far from being burnt, far from being smoky, their clothes were soaked through. And I understood that because of the flood that came out of my mouth 
and went down into that place where people had placed themselves from their own sinful nature, from their own rebellious nature, from their own deceptive choices that they made, thinking that sin is something that they could play with, thinking that sin was something they could ignore, thinking that hell was something that was not real. They had been carried to the very mouth of hell, Hades, Sheol itself. And then that water began to come, a quenching, saving, last minute flood. And it went down into that place and it soaked them enough. They heard and they turned around and they began to come up. And now it was no longer a steep cliff. I was still there. It was still steep and precarious for me, leaning out at this angle with just a rope holding me, tethering me to an unseen force. But now for them, it turned into an incline for them down there who had gone to the very mouth of hell itself. It turned into an incline and they began to come up out of that place to come up back to safety. And so that is explaining the avalanche of water that went over the steep cliff into the ravine. And that is also explaining the rushing and gushing river. And I saw that the power that was coming to me was an unrestrained power. It was extremely magnificent, but it was also terrifying. I saw in the dream that this word that God was giving me, this overflowing word that kept coming a lot, a lot, a lot. And then uneducated mockers of the day will say, you dream more than Moses. You dream more than Daniel. It was coming from a source that was outside of myself, a very powerful, intelligent source, a commanding presence. And I knew in this dream, this is not a source that I'm going to say no to or anything like that. I'm not going to debate with this source and say, well, who are you and who do you declare Jesus to be? There's no foolishness like that. When God stands before you, you either know or you're going to completely miss the encounter like Samson's parents didn't even know that they were standing in the presence of an angel and kept calling him the man. The source was coming and it was coming to me. And that was that. God had made his choice and that was that. And then the dream changed and I saw myself speaking the word of God. And some of it was the word of God as it is written in the Bible right now. The word that is there, that is given to us for teaching, for preaching, for rebuke, and for exhortation, but I saw that the majority of the word that was coming to me was regarding future events. And here is the reason that God said that I should bring out this dream. When I saw the word of God, it was rising into the air. So the sentences and the words that were coming to me, when I spoke them, they came out of my mouth like little words. So you could see the words coming out like white smoke. And then they formed a cloud and then eventually enough of the words would gather and then they would roll up together and form in the air a scroll. So they went from being misty words, enough of them would form a cloud and then the cloud would solidify into a scroll. And the scroll would hang before me so it was open. You know that scrolls, they sometimes look like this. In the, they look like an open book like this. But then after it hung there for a little bit, it would go and it would roll itself up very tightly, and then a seal would be placed upon it, and it would be pressed upon the scroll with red wax. And then the scroll would go up into the heavens, and it would be put into a basket that was in the heavens, and a number was then pressed into the warm wax so that it was very easy to see which scroll was first and what scroll was second and third, and they numbered themselves according to the wax number that was placed in the seal in correct order. And I saw myself speaking word after word after word, and they went up as scrolls, <laughs> rolling up and a wax seal placed upon them and then up into the basket and a number pressed into it. And they were numbered and they were placed in that basket hanging in the heavens above me. 
And I saw that even though these scrolls looked like scrolls, they also had a secondary appearance. So with the Lord, sometimes something can look like something and then it can look like something else. So the scrolls were in the basket upright, like one, two, three, four, five, like that. But then they were also looking like very large vials of red liquid, red liquid. And each scroll was closed tightly with a a stopper. So each vial like this was sealed very tightly with a rubber seal, closing it up. So these scrolls, AKA vials of liquid sat above the city where I was living at the same time I was living in a city, but it was so strange because wherever I went in that city, as I was going about my daily life, I could easily look up and I saw the basket hanging in the sky above the city. And then even though I was looking in the heavenly perspective, I saw on earth, a woman, I saw on earth, a woman and she was sleeping and she had a bad dream. And the dream was forming a dark and a cloudy mist over her sleeping form. So a woman was lying in her bed and she was sleeping and she was having a dream. Dream was happening in her mind, her soul realm. But at the same time, the dream was taking a physical form of very cloudy darkness around her. And this was a dream of witchcraft. This was a witchcraft dream. This woman was having, someone was attacking her in her sleep and it was taking physical manifestation of over her form. It entered her house. Why? Because her house was not adequately sealed up. Her house was not adequately protected. And so the witchcraft was able to not only penetrate her physical home, it was able to penetrate the spiritual realm where her soul was having a dream experience. And she was being attacked in her sleep and attacked in her home and much darkness was being released against her. And she had no idea what it was. She woke up, she went to work, she went about her normal day, but inside her spirit was troubled and she was being affected by heaviness and confusion that lingered in her as she pondered over her dream. And the Lord was showing me that this dream was of witchcraft was sent against this woman to do harm and to rob her of blessings that were her as hers as a child of God. But eventually, because this woman woke up, she didn't pray to break the dream. She didn't pray and do spiritual warfare to scatter the effects of the dream. And so the dream, like a fly with filthy feet, landed on this woman's life, defiled it, and then began to work through just like leaven or yeast works through dough. And so the dream began to bind this woman. And I saw her that she was being bound from her feet up to her head, something like a body sock or a blanket, or like the dough we roll around sausages when we're making sausage rolls, this thing began to bind this woman from her feet and it began to bind her just like a python, but not a snake. It was something that looked like cloth, a body sock, and it wound over her throughout the course of the day. And at first it was flexible so that even though this woman was having limited movement, she did not notice that she was being spiritually bound. But this thing thickened itself. It started off thin and flexible at first. It came up to her neck, only her head was sticking out. It started off thin and flexible at first, but by the time the day was over, this thing had thickened so much that it was like the very, very heavy material that you use for the heaviest winter sweaters. She was struggling to walk. She was struggling to do her daily tasks. And by the time she got home, her movements were so constricted that all she could do was go to her bed and just fall into it. Her arms were pinned at her side. She was exhausted. She was emotionally distraught. She was fighting against the binding, but very weakly because this binding was alive. And the more she struggled against it, the more she lost as it tightened on her and this dem demonic binding was prevailing against this woman, even though it was something that came to her in a dream. And this is how spells come to people. You take yourself to the cinema and you want to watch Perch Anarchy. You want to watch movies that are filled with blood, filled with murder, filled with zombies, filled with death. The films have received eight different levels of curses from the studio executives and from the directors and from the Illuminati witches and the transvestites who look like women but are men that are starring in these movies. You open your soul up 
like a gate to every filthy and defiling thing. And all these evil projectiles come out of the screen. They come out of the screens, out of the movies, out of all the so-called shadow journal owners. Witchcraft and new agery are taking over the earth. Every suggestion, people sign up for it. Now they're light workers. Now they're shadow workers. Now they're healing through going back to their orishas. Every filthy, abominable thing has entered into the gates of so-called children of God. And they are becoming bound by deception, bound by lies, bound by the false prophets that they won't stop following and eating from. Mixing light and darkness as if they think that Jesus will accept this hot and cold mixture. And eventually they lose their freedom of movement. They lose a powerful tongue. They lose the ability to say in the name of Jesus, when demons are attacking them in their sleep, then they say, Oh, celestial, I was trapped and I was so scared. And I was trying to say, J -j -j, but I couldn't say his name. And why else? Because when you are awake, you give your power away in the daytime. And then you think that you will be able to walk in nighttime spiritual realms and carry power. You think that demons will listen to you. No, they will scratch up your face. And you will have to go to work and cover those scratches with makeup. And people will wonder why you're wearing so much. It's because you're scratched up from spirits of the nighttime. Because you've given away your power in the daytime. You've given away your power because you have bad dreams and you wake up and you say it was just a dream. But it's a body sock. It's a binding. It's spiritual wickedness from the high places. It's the thrones and dominions and the virtues who, filled with, who fell with Satan who absorb their power from the complacency of the church and the ignorance of the church. And the church becomes bound and powerless and afraid. This is the condition of this woman that I saw right after I saw the prophecies going up to sit and wait for their time of fulfillment. And so this woman was struggling weakly on her bed, having no power to cast off the spiritual oppression that had laid hold of her. And then I saw the scrolls in heaven and one of them lit up. One of the prophetic messages lit up. It was the perfect scroll, the appropriate scroll with the power in it, the teaching in it, the anointing in it, the truth in it to release that woman from her spiritual prison, to unbind her from everything that had caught her. I don't know what that particular scroll was. I could not see, but I saw that it lit up by itself because it knew that it was the message to help her. And the scroll was right above us in the basket. But I saw that this woman is someone who previously disregarded things that had been spoken. I saw that this woman was someone who mocked the prophetic word, who said things like, it'll never happen. Have you seen the Navy? Have you seen the army? Have you seen our technology? Have you seen our soldiers? Have you seen our borders? I saw that this was the kind of person who never took the prophetic word of God seriously. The woke kind who appoint themselves the police force to police prophecy. They lack the ability to use discernment and to use their knees as a way of parsing truth from lies. And so they think that discernment means asking questions and saying, show me the scripture. And so this woman she should have been reaching out for one of those scrolls to cut herself out of the trap, but she did not even consider God's last day's truth as anything that could deal with the depression and the oppression that she was under. And so I stood there and I was watching her struggle and she was unable to cut herself out of the trap. And so the scroll also sat there unused. And then the dream ended. And the, word, the Lord began to teach me the word out of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 10. And let me read it to you first so that you can understand. It is verse 10 and 11. And the word of God is this. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. For as the rain comes down and as the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And so the Lord is saying here 
that every word that comes out of his mouth cannot be refuted. You cannot say it's not true when God has spoken it. You cannot reject it because you don't like it. You cannot say, prove it simply because you don't understand it. Because God is equating the prophetic word and saying that it's even more powerful than the natural processes of the earth. It's more powerful than rain coming down. And we all know that rain is a fact and it does come down. He says it's more powerful than snow coming down. And we know that snow does indeed come down. Well, God says, just like rain and snow come down, and it is impossible for those different forms of precipitation, moisture, to come down and leave the earth dry. They come down for a purpose. They come to cause the earth to be watered, to make the earth fruitful so that it can bring forth flowers and seeds so that those who want to plant on the earth can have rain on their crops and those who want to eat their harvest. This is bread for the eater that the harvest can grow because it has received rain. So God says that the word of his mouth will never come down and go back to him empty. It must fulfill its purpose. And he says, not only will it accomplish what he pleases, but it will also prosper in its doing because he is the one who sent it. And so he says that the end times prophetic messages that are being prophesied by anointed and appointed vessels all over the world are a heavenly manna. They are a living bread and they will surely fulfill their times and seasons. And he says that all they are waiting for is for their times and seasons so that they can fulfill themselves just as they have been spoken. So this means that you can have 12 million people in the Navy, 40 million people in the Air Force. You can have 79 billion nukes. If the Lord says that your enemy is going to come against you with a bow and arrow and prevail against you, then your enemy is going to come against you and embarrass you with all that weaponry, with all that infantry, with all that military might and strength. The bow and arrow person will come against you and the bow and arrow person will prevail against you because it is thus, thus saith the Lord. When the Lord utters a word, though you strive against it and you push against it, you will be unable to dislodge it because the word is a stone. And those who try to fight against the stone, they will stumble against it or it will fall on them and crush them. And so the Lord says that if he sends a messenger to speak, they should not hold back, but they should indeed speak that word exactly as it was given to them so that it can go back to it, uh, its allotted place in heaven. And I spoke in a recent prophecy that is called, do not mishandle the holy things of God. I said that one of the things that I saw in a dream was that a woman had been given the prophetic word of God, but because she was now in the habit of overly engaging with her audience, something that I do not and will not do. Because she was in the habit of overly engaging with her audience, one, and because she received the prophecy, but she did not have the understanding of it, the full understanding of it, God had not given it to her. It is possible to bring a prophecy that you do not have the full understanding of, and that is with the Lord, because we know that the mechanism of both bringing the word is God. The mechanism of speaking it out is by the impetus of the Holy Spirit. And the mechanism of fulfillment will be done by the Lord in his own timing. So the vessel is merely to be obedient to hear, proclaim so that the word can live, so that the word can be like the rain and the snow going out to do its job. And then God will capture that rain and snow, that word, that scroll, God will capture it and he will fulfill it. The vessel's understanding is only ancillary to the point. The fact that I'm able to explain and expand upon the prophecies that God has given me is because the grace of God is with me to not only cook the food, but serve it and then tell you what's on the menu. But because this woman did not have that ability, she interpreted the Lord's prophecies in her own understanding and she corrupted the prophecy and he was unhappy with her and she was going to be judged for it. Messengers should not hold back when they are given the word, 
because the word is going to be spoken out and go to its allotted place in heaven. And the Lord says, after that, whoever disregard the word of prophecy that is spoken is doing it to their own detriment. You're doing it to your own harm. I've already said to people, you mock these prophecies. You are literally mocking at your own soul for these are the Lord's words. And you could be unsuccessful completely. You are 100% unsuccessful in mocking God because it says in Galatians 6 that God cannot be mocked. This means that you can try, but you will fail. On your end, when you call him names like the sky daddy in a dress, you feel that you have successfully mocked him. But all you have done is cause the hand of one of the faithful watchers to write down against your name, rebellious, sinful, blasphemous tongue. And then you will stand before God and he will not reign. He will not read out to you. I heard your diss track and I was mocked. He will read out to you rebellious, willful, sinful tongue, blasphemous. And then you will end up gnashing your teeth on your way to the outer darkness. He says it is to detriment of your soul that you disregard the word. So you hear that Russia and China will come here and then you follow the, have you seen the military track and then Russia and China come here in the years to come and you are utterly unprepared and your heart begins to fail according to the word of God in Luke 21 and 26, men's hearts failing them for the things that will come upon the earth. Not everyone is going to drop dead from shock because of seeing the Nephilim. Some people are simply going to be unable to function in a future where Americans are conquered captives of the Russians and the Chinese. It will be inconceivable to them and they will have a complete critical meltdown the way nuclear power plants melt down when the reactors can no longer be cooled. Total breakdown because you mocked and you disregarded the word that would have helped you, that would have saved you. He says they do it to disregard the word at their own detriment. They do it to their own peril because the things that are coming on the word, on the world, will bind people. Just like I explained this woman being bound. He says that the things that are coming will bind people. And these are not the usual suspects that we know or that we're used to. Meaning these are not the normal prophetic words. God says there's, there's going to be a this and there's going to be a little bit of shaking, but take heart and this and that. You never hear that sort of stuff here. The sort of stuff that we, stuff that we talk about here, the kind of thing that I'm bringing out are very final and permanent things. They are speaking of who lives and who dies. They are speaking of end times harvest, how the tares will be unceremoniously ripped out from among the wheat, final things. And so the Lord says that some of the things that are coming in the end times are things that have never been heard of or seen before. You come to this channel and I'm telling you that the wave of children to come in the future, and they're already coming the children on TikTok are already tagging me in videos where babies are coming with just three fingers and fanged teeth. This is not CGI. These are actual children who are coming into the world. To Esdras and chapter 5 and verse 8. And part of it says that women will bear monstrous beings. And I spoke about this in the prophecy, future events and the loss of the sea how very frightening things will be born. And that is why you will find in the future, the Lord says that many people will opt willingly for sterilization because there will be very high incidences of strange and uncomfortable and frightening looking children coming upon this earth. And the doctors will not be able to explain it as any kind of congenital birth defect because it will just be too much to gaze upon, too much to look at something born with scales and probably both legs fused together. Ariel, the little mermaid's baby sister. There's no way to explain that coming into the human gene pool. But that is because the mighty men, the Nephilim, are returning and their genes that are being carried secretly in the population up to this day will begin to express themselves. This is the kind of thing, things not heard of in the mainstream flow of Christianity. These are the kinds of things that are coming. And God says, you would think 
that it makes sense for people to help themselves to prophetic wisdom. So you're not paying for it. It's provided absolutely free. The resource is here 24 hours a day, whether I'm here or not, you have access to it, but it is the choice being made by the hearts out, out there. It's not for lack of the prophetic word and the wisdom being there. He says it makes sense for people to help themselves to prophetic wisdom, to the knowledge and to the insights that God is releasing specifically for these end times to make themselves spiritually ready to keep their homes safe from the power of the beast, Satan and the antichrist, as well as to become educated about everything that is being released on the earth right now. This was in 2018. And the Lord says, what you see now is only an opening act to the full end times judgments that will follow. Satan is working everywhere, using even the most harmless looking things to trap people, to sicken them, to bind them. And yes, he will kill them if he can get away with it. If you are a child of God, if you truly are one of God's sheep, then your primary interest at this point should be the word of God knowing it, speaking it over your life, praying it, becoming skilled in it, and using it as an anchor to keep you from drifting during the harsh and bitterly emotional times that are ahead. So if this was 2018, and the Lord is saying that the things we are seeing now are only an opening act to the end times judgments that are coming, and that we are going to be fighting against the enemy as he uses even the most innocuous looking things, even the most harmless looking things to trap people, to sicken them, bind them and kill them. Then what God is telling us is that this is an ample and perfect description of how one enters into beginning of sorrows, how one enters into what the Bible calls birth pains and children of God instead of debating the word of God, instead of appointing themselves as Pharisees to debunk the prophetic word, we are supposed to be using the word of God in deep knowledge, speaking it over our lives, praying it and using it as an anchor to keep us from drifting during the harsh and bitterly emotional times that are coming. We should be becoming skilled warriors with the truth, using the sword of God's word, always making sure to put on our spiritual armor and using the word of God as a weapon to protect ourselves and to protect our families from the spells, the witchcraft, the incantations, the sorcery, and the sheer evil that is pumping into the world at such an alarming rate. Look at the rape and murder statistics around the world. Look at the increasing aggression. Look at the, the, the rise of crimes that make no sense. Look at the number of child criminal defendants that we are seeing here in the United States. Look how many adults are losing their lives and how many children are losing their lives to minors. All these things are signals to us of where we are going. And God says that this rise in evil that is pumping into the world is as a result of human sin coupled with the demonic activity happening worldwide. We live in a world where CERN exists. And God says that CERN is not only affecting time, but it is affecting space and it is causing changes to the fabric of time as we know it. Portals are being opened, demonic creatures are being willingly summoned here by people who love deadly and occultic knowledge because they crave power. They want to have power over others. They want to cause harm. And so they're feeding men, women, and children, human lives as currency, as fodder, blood poured out on spiritual altars. Children being defiled is another type of sacrifice. And that is happening even at the grassroots level. America is slowly eating away at what is right, moral fortitude, moral truth. 
and saying that men can be with men and women can be with women and adults can like children. And all it means is that they're attracted to minors, minor attracted person. The word pedophile is being actively retired in the United States. Multiple agendas, human sin taking place from the highest to the lowest level and taking place inside our dimension and outside that dimension. And what is the protection? What is the one safety that will never fail us? It's the word of God. But how skilled are we in the word of God? We're tearing down the prophetic word of God. You mock the prophecies. You mock yourself. You curse me. You are cursing your own life because God cannot be mocked and you cannot curse the vessel that he has sent to bring the word out. You can try, but it will just go in a circular route and come right back to you. The evil that you sow, you are sowing into your own soul. God says his word is a powerful weapon that keeps us safe from spells, witchcraft, incantations. This is people using their mouth to speak curses over the people of God, the people of God themselves using their own words to curse themselves. You hear end times prophecy and then you give in to depression and then you begin to say things that align with Satan's wishes for your life and not what God says about us. Imagine if the ancient church were in our place facing these times. The people that the Bible, Hebrews 11 talks of these people and how they came even to the point of death and met it with courage. And today's believers are saying things like, well, we're not appointed to wrath and Jesus wouldn't beat up his bride. And have you ever asked yourself, it says the children have, are not appointed to wrath. How do you know that you are a child? How do you know that you don't fall into the lukewarm basket, hot and cold, rejected and spat out of the Lord's mouth? Why is the church so confident that they are children when the Lord is saying of his own church, rebellious, slumbering, lazy, complacent, making so many assumptions, chasing after lies and loving false prophets. How can God have a different estimation of what makes a child? And the ones who claim that they are children are wrapped up in every kind of lie, every kind of defunct and defiled new agery under the sun. They love, they love the word of false prophet Jezebels on the internet. They love that. They gobble it up. Give us another rapture date so we can fail. And so we can excuse it and say we all miss it sometimes. It's the heart that counts. Who are these children when the Lord is saying that the majority will fall away when persecution comes? Because of persecution, the word in them will simply dry up and they will be unable to take the things that they see coming upon the earth. The Lord says that no one at this time can be blind to the rise of sin, to the increase of demonic activity happening worldwide. No one at this time can be blind to the natural disasters and the hardships and the way that entire groups of people are simply dying around the world overnight. 2,000 people robbed of a chance to make it right with Jesus Christ. 2,000 people dead from a flood, a single flooding event in Libya. And then people will still say, how can you prophesy about floods when God said never again would he flood the earth? When I prophesy of massive flooding in the earth, does this mean that God is flooding the entire earth? Floods that have taken away thousands in Indonesia, floods that have taken away thousands in Pakistan, taking away thousands in Thailand. Other people are losing their lives in these massive natural disasters, unprecedented flooding in Australia, unprecedented flooding in New Zealand, unheard of flooding for the first time ever in Europe in 2022. Prophesied those floods in 2021 because God says his anger against Europe is that they are returning to their pagan ways, returning to their to their ancient era of going into the forest to dress up as druids and conjure up forest spirits and river spirits. And so he would flood them as judgments. Floods are coming. And then people in this era, because they have not read the word of God and because they despise the prophetic word of God will say, but he put his bow in the clouds. What does his bow have to do with the fact that the book of Luke chapter 21 says, 
that the seas will be roaring, which means that the seas will take on a particularly destructive nature. They will cause disasters and men's hearts will fail. How can we be this unprepared, unshod, unready, poorly handling the scriptures? completely misunderstanding everything that is put before us at this time. This is because people don't value either God's written word, the logos, and they definitely despise prophesying. And yet there remains a remnant who are skilled in marrying the two together into one powerful braid. And they're using that braid to climb up to a higher space where they will be kept safe from the destructions that are surely going to ravage the entire earth. No part of this earth is going to be left unaffected by the coming of the types of prophecies that I'm speaking of here. And so the Lord was speaking of the power of the prophetic word and he was likening it to manna. So in this dream, he was likening it to manna. I saw that these prophecies in this dream, I saw that the prophecies that I'm speaking don't come from me. They have a divine source. They come from the Lord. And the Lord was teaching me and saying that this, the spoken word and the prophetic word are like living things that remain suspended in the heavens until the time of their fulfillment. So they go up there, they are numbered in their order, and then they are waiting for the time when the seal upon them will be broken for them to begin to fulfill like the rain and the snow, what they're sent for. But God says they're also manna. And when God uses this term manna, it should tell us instantly that God's view of the things that he says is rightly that they are not earthly. Manna is not an earthly substance. Manna is a heavenly food. Manna is of God. Manna is non-human. It was not baked by anybody on earth. It was food that was scattered daily from the heavens for the Israelites to eat. And it was scattered and it was the only food they got. So they didn't have multiple food choices. Manna is what they ate for 40 years. Manna is what God determined was right for them on the type of journey that they were taking. They had to eat it. And the time that they complained that they were missing onions and leeks and meat, God sent them the meat and then he sent them judgment right after it. And the Bible records that they died. They died with the meat still in their mouth, which means that you can complain for things that you want and it will sow death to you. But if you are humble, if you are obedient and you eat the food that God is giving you, it will be life and sustenance to you. Those who cried for meat died with the taste of their craving in their mouth. So you want a prophecy that has sugar. You want to hear that Russia will invade, but you want to hear it in a way that sounds nice. You want to continuously question end times judgment, destruction, prophecy. Where's the hope? Where do you think the hope is? The hope is bound intricately in with the word of judgment to those who are righteous. The Lord makes promises that you can look up in Ezekiel chapter nine, but to those who are not righteous, all you will get are the thorns of the prophetic word. So the righteous must carefully handle the word and the hope will come unbound and enter their spirits. But to the mockers, the scoffers, the MIT scholars, the learned, the Pharisees, all they get is the thorns. Non-human food of a non-human origin given to these people in the ancient days to sustain them. And it also came with instructions, not only how to pick it up, but when to pick it up. They were told, take it in six days, not seven. Don't do any gathering on the seventh day. And on the sixth day, gather twice as much and it will feed you on the Sabbath and the day after. Those who obeyed, they were able to feed themselves. But of course, there was always a rebellious class. It would not be prophecy and it would not be scripture if the rebellious class was not present. Those who rebelled, those who didn't listen, they went out to gather the non-human food, the manna, and what they got was rot and worms. If they kept it over, it rotted and it stank. 
And that is also the action of the prophecy. To those who are receiving it by the spirit, it is sustenance. It feeds you. You grow. You get stronger, even if it is frightening and it's jolting. But to those who have, who have rebellion inside them, hardness, constantly wanting to challenge the word of God, all you get is rot because your pride corrupts what is coming. Your wokeness corrupts what is coming. And you cannot be fed on rots and worms. Whoever thinks that they can weigh and critique and have an opinion on the words that God is bringing forth in this time, this critical time of human history, all you are exposing is the rot that is within you, showing that you are a rotten and rebellious something that cannot contain truth because you think that you must add to the truth. But all you bring is your own opinion, which is rot. The word of God is not intended to rot and spoil inside of us. It has power. It has divine origin. And its application is to set us free. But instead of reaching for the words of God and putting them to use in our lives, the majority do not even believe them. They ignore the prophetic messages of God. They dismiss them and they also attempt to belittle and dismiss the person bringing them because they have no honor for the source of the words, God himself. And so the Lord used this dream to show me exactly where my prophetic words are coming from and where they go. They go up to heaven. They go up and they sit and they wait until the right time to start opening themselves upon the earth and they express themselves exactly as God said they would. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. And these are the Lord's words and they will surely come to pass whether one person believes or 10 or 10,000 or 10 million or no one these words will hold true for their source is faithful. God is the source and they are all numbered and waiting until the right time to reveal themselves. And God is watching over his word to perform it in its timing and in its season. Jeremiah chapter one and verse 12. When God prepares a person to bring his word, he will always tell them their function and the Lord used multiples and multiples of dreams over the years, even to now, to give my feet surety in the work that I am doing. But I already know, and this I must say, for the Lord told me it more than, it's almost 10 years at the beginning when he started to give me these prophetic words. And, he, and any American who hears me say this will know exactly what it means if you're a foreigner, you may not get the reference, but there's no American except maybe the very, very youngsters who won't understand it. He said to me, my daughter, I'm sending you to a hard hearted people, a prideful people hardened in rebellion and proud of their sin. This is Ezekiel chapter two and Ezekiel chapter three. I always reference these chapters. If you've never gone and listened to these chapters, then you will have no idea what the Master's Voice Prophecy blog is for, what I am doing here. You will never understand it. And you will never understand why the reception is what it is. He said to me, I'm sending you to a prideful, hard-hearted people who will not hear you. He said that I am sending you to lions, and tigers and bears. This is what the Lord said to me. I am sending you to lions and tigers and bears, and they will fight you, but they will not prevail against you because the word in you shall be as a wall against them. Ezekiel chapter two and chapter three. Make sure you read those chapters as long as well as Isaiah 6 and 10. And then you will understand why it is whenever you take from this fountain oil, 
or water and you attempt to give it to someone else, you will understand why you meet the reception that you meet. You will understand why it cannot be received, why it often falls to the ground and it hardly ever finds good soil because it is prophesied against this nation that that is what people will do. Because the Lord is determining, please listen to me, the Lord has determined a disaster against Babylon. This is mystery Babylon. This is the place where Revelation 17 and Revelation 18 shall unfold in full with nothing missing. The word will be like a song that is heard but not remembered. But the Lord says that to those who want it, we down here, across the whole world, you find this resource. God orders your steps here. God, God brings you here. You are able to control yourself in a mature fashion. You're able to settle down. He says that we can access the truth of the prophetic word anytime we want. We can learn from them. We can use them to correct our lives when we are out of alignment with God's word. We can even use these prophetic messages as a clock to stay updated on God's prophetic timeline, which is not like the ordinary human timeline. But whether we regard them, meaning that we listen and receive them or not, these posts come from the Lord. They hold a place in the spiritual realm. And when they are ready, we, all of them, I speak for myself, especially for the Lord has told me, you will see your prophecies performed upon this earth. And I've always said to people, whether you're ahead of me in age or whether you're after me in age, the Lord says that my eyes will see these messages that I'm giving to you month after month, year after year. He says, my eyes will see them performed upon this earth then I'm not sure what the majority of people are hearing. If you are my contemporary, alive at this time, that's what contemporary means. We're on the same timeline, whether you're older or younger, we're alive at the same time. We are forming basically one generation. And the Lord is saying, you shall surely see them performed. Then do these prophecies sound like they're 50 or 40 years out? The Lord said, for instance, the second amendment will be taken away. And now you see that the current administration has recently set up a task force to investigate gun violence, they say, and find newer, safer ways for Americans to carry their firearms. Does it sound like it's going to be another 30 years before this is a gun-free zone that can be easily captured and absorbed as part of the beast system, the global beast system? Does this sound like some far ranging after the rapture thing, or is it time to take off the scales and open the eyes and become wise? Many people are out of alignment with God's word. They disregard the prophetic word because they want to regard the crime scene in their heart, the theories in their heart, the plans and desires of their own heart, the timing that they think God has, and God is revealing a different timing but they cannot come into alignment with it because they do not regard prophetic truth. The Lord says that his word have a place in the spiritual realm. And when they are ready, when the words are ready to be fulfilled, we will see each one revealing itself as the scroll unrolls and each scroll will bring exactly what God said it's going to bring. God said the sea is going to dry up and we're going to see massive, never before seen creatures in there. Prepare for the sea to dry up and for us to see creatures we've never seen before. God said that monsters will be birthed upon this earth. Prepare to see them birthed upon the earth. God said that we will see men walking with chains and the demons that control them walking with them. Prepare to see demons upon the earth for the first time since they left as the Nephilim souls. A rule of thumb is this. If God says something minuscule, very small, 
almost ordinary. If God says something bigger and he says something medium sized, he says something large and he says something massive. Once you start to see the minuscule, the small and the medium size come to pass, you might as well skip to the end and know that the massive will not fail in its application. The Lord says dinosaurs will come back. They will come back. They will come back no matter who says that they never existed and that they're all a lie. The Lord says the present president will deteriorate on screen. November 2020, I said it, that that man is going to begin to have medical emergency after medical emergency in front of everyone and that they would let him visibly deteriorate on screen in front of us all. And sure enough, three and a half years have passed since then, November 2020. Here we are now, September 2023. He's walking off stage. He has no idea what's going on. He can't articulate a thought and take it to its logical conclusion. There's an entire wall of protection in front of him. People answering for him, doing everything they can to cover for the, the reality that is in front of us now. But the reality was prophesied in 2020. Everybody was looking at Trump. Everybody was looking at Biden. God said, my daughter, look this way. Kamala, Kamala, Kamala's election. It is Kamala's moment. And people said, it'll never be. She's unqualified. And here she is now, head of the task force to take your guns away, exactly as I told you in the prophecy, communism in America. In the prophecy, they will have nothing. In the prophecy, brace for impacts. In the prophecy, Kamala and the beast. All of a sudden it's dawning and it's looming large. But when it was a small seed, who received it into the garden of their hearts? Who regarded the word of the Lord like rain and like snow? And who kicked it away and said never? And now it's come right back around on a circuit. Because he said his word will never return to him void. That word is on a circuit. The scroll is unrolling itself to read out what was written. And it's all on the blog. And those who read it long ago are not being taken by surprise. But those who are watching this horror show now, because it is a horror show to some people, for me, it matters not. What matters is that the Lord's word is integrous. It is whole. It is solid. Now I tell you before it come so that when it come, you will know I am he. John 13 and 19. Who is the he? For I am no he. The he who spoke it is God saying, my modus operandi is to tell you before it becomes real so that when you see it unfolding, you will know that I, the Lord, spoke true. We can pray and fast over some of these outcomes as we see them unrolling and bringing what God said they would bring, but not all of them, the majority of them. And since we do not know which prophecy where God may show a little mercy, like Isaiah 38, where he might relent, for he has said in many of them that he will never relent, especially when it comes to America. The Lord says that this nation cannot discharge, which means to shrug off or be able to remove the burden of something. She will not discharge her sin. Then the entire point of hearing the prophecy is for it to be fruitful in your life, you first have to know about it you then have to believe it because only then will you pray about it. You will never pray about something that you do not believe and that you don't know about. And so the burden of proof, when the prophecy is spoken, it goes up to its resting place, but then there is a burden upon you, the listener, what your response will be, because exactly how you handle God's word is how God is going to handle you. That is the prophecy from October the 4th, 2018. Release the scrolls. I am Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog. God bless you. Thank you for being with me. And until I see you again, goodbye.